The Wall Street Journal has reported it is possible that North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un might have sent younger soldiers to Russia aged under 20 and without appropriate military training. The publication reports that video evidence and intelligence reports suggest that the North Korean soldiers deployed to Russia are likely young men under the age of 20 who are in the early stages of military conscription. The Wall Street Journal reported that these soldiers' training has focused on assassinations and infrastructure destruction in the mountainous regions of South Korea. A far cry from the trench warfare unfolding in the flat plains along the Ukrainian-Russian border. Most of these recruits have probably never left North Korea and the country's army is equipped with outdated conventional equipment. South Korean Defense Minister Kim Jong-hyun, assessing the military, called them mere cannon fodder mercenaries. The US, South Korea and Ukraine estimate that approximately 3,000 North Korean troops have arrived in Russia this month. Former South Korean defense official James J.B. Park suggests that North Korea's Kim Jong-un may want to first gauge the domestic reaction to this decision, as well as the Kremlin's response by sending what he considers to be a relatively expandable resource. Park believes that if Russian leader Vladimir Putin demands additional reinforcements or Kim decides to fulfill recently strengthened bilateral commitments, these troops will pave the way for more experienced units. The Wall Street Journal also reported that it is still unclear what role the North Korean military will play in Russia's war against Ukraine. Without taking part in hostilities, they could gain experience by observing the use of drones and the conditions of war, especially in cooperation with the Russians who use North Korean munitions and missiles. On the other hand, North Korea's direct involvement in hostilities would signal a dramatic escalation of the conflict, which has been going on for over two years, the US and NATO allies have said. The first North Korean military units that have undergone training at training grounds in eastern Russia have arrived in the war zone. They were spotted in Russia's Kursk Oblast, where Ukrainian forces are conducting an operation. North Korean military personnel whom Russia intends to use in the war against Ukraine have several weeks to train. Ukrainian intelligence added that the number of North Korean troops deployed to Russia is currently around 12,000, including 500 officers, particularly three Pyongyang generals. Tens of thousands of Georgians massed outside Parliament Monday night, demanding the annulment of the weekend parliamentary election that the president denounced as rigged with the help of Russia. The rally deepened the political crisis in the South Caucasus country, where the governing Georgian Dream Party has become increasingly authoritarian and tilted toward Moscow. We have to create the full picture how this unique, unprecedented theft happened which was conducted in mass and systematically which was a pre-planned huge operation that stole our votes, that stole the parliament from us and stole the constitution, President Salome Zurabishvili told the demonstrators who waved Georgian and European Union flags. Zurabishvili, a mostly ceremonial president, told the crowd that she would defend the country's path toward Europe against actions by the Georgian dream. Nesha Chachava, who was wrapped in the Georgian flag, said the demonstrators, don't want Russia, we don't want to back to Russia or back to the Soviet Union. Student Lana Toganids, 20, called the demonstration the last hope to save our democracy in this country. The US and the European Union urged full investigations of the result of Saturday's election. Uh, I think uh, Europe will be more clear to support us and uh, we hope we will win finally and the Russian dream will go home in Russia, in Moscow, <laughs> and we will be part of the European Union. We are here because we don't want Russia, we don't want back to Russia, we don't want back to Soviet Union. And um, Georgia is pro-European country and um, I don't know, like people are, people are upset because election, it's obvious that election was rigged. So uh, I hope that something will 
be changed and uh, all these people they want they don't want back to Russia yeah Yes, this is our last hope to save our democracy in this country. Our elections have been rigged and if we don't succeed in this fight, our country will be handed over to Russia and we're not ready to give that up.